Some, like the Merc, prefer to take just the basics and turn them into something completely new. Well, it opened in 1967. Where Boots is now on Carnival Street, that used yeah. to be a flea market. Yeah. And they used to have, upstairs, they used to have um, all the stalls. And that, that's where we started. There used to be a, a little mod stall up there called Jimmy. And then when that closed down, they moved down to Ganton Street. And then that's where it all kind of really kicked off. About revival time, about 78, 79. And then it's been going since then, up and down the street. Well, on the suitings, we still do the mohair in the suits. We've got 10% mohair in all the suits, which is a very, very 60s fabric. You've still got the ticket pockets. You've got the, uh, the low-rise trousers that sit on your hips. Uh, you've got the slight kick pleat at the bottom. And when we tailor trousers, we always try and tailor them with a, with a little step at the back. So when you've got your shoe on, it just, just looks elegant. And all the, obviously all the trousers are tailored short anyway. Bieber's was better than the merchandise, if you know what I mean because it was an attitude and it was a lifestyle and things like that. A lot of the Bieber, Bieber stuff, for me, wasn't that great. That particular dress was great, but the whole idea of going into their shops and the hat racks and stuff like that and all the feather boas and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that was great. So they sold a lifestyle. I started going there in 1967 she so had the most beautiful, lovely little cotton dresses, sort of about three pounds, so one could afford them. And they were so colourful and so stylish and cut for the slim figure. And uh, to be there in the changing room, listening to the Beatles' Sardine Pepper, well, you know, one of the highlights of my life. People aspire to be this, fic this fictitious person, don't they? The person that doesn't really exist. And eventually it does exist because they're being sold the image. It was like going to a club, you know. It's like walking into Kensington Market at the same period. You know, you just feel that it felt that you joined something, that you were part of it, and the rest of the world didn't matter. I tried on this tiny dress, this tiny Bieber dress, which would have been from about 1968, because it was labelled, and it was the first garment that I'd ever tried on secondhand that I didn't have to alter because it was just it just fit me perfectly all over. And of course it was it was almost like it was tailor made for me. So I thought I like this and it's the first time I tried something on which was actually flattering to my shape. I put it on, I just felt like I'd come home. Some mods became dandies, some mods became skinheads, some mods went into the Frenchy look, some mods became hippies. I mean, it just it just went like that in lots of different directions. Eye makeup wasn't so important anymore, nor was the hair. By that time, by 67, you just had long hair parted in the middle or with a fringe. Uh, yes, the dresses became a lot more important and there were more styles about more fabrics and patterns you have this whole hippie trippy doctrine coming in from san francisco the west coast so that really destroyed all that young urban culture drugs probably played a big role in each one of those streams that went off by which time, nobody wanted to do any work amongst my lot. You know, you were considered a bit of a jerk if you had a job or were studying any work. What do you want to do that for? You know, you were encouraged not even to work, for God's sake. Whereas mods were always edgy and they wanted their clothes and they would steal and beg to get it. But everyone indulged in that culture for three or four years and... I know, go, let's go to Tangiers for six months a year. Or, oh, wonderful, fantastic, India, all oh, fantastic. But then you sort of think, ah, oh, I want to come back now and, and start to... Th usually because you're off skin. <laughs> and people just l let it go and things, you know, it was easier to wrap yourself up in a kaftan and lose that sharp edge. I mean, Mark Bolan, you know, is a great example of someone who went from 
Stamford Hill in 1959, this sharp little Jewish guy, into a pixie by the 1968. So, can we truly say that the 1960s fashion revolution has had a lasting influence on clothing design? Were the inventions of 40 years ago so revolutionary that today it is hard to escape drawing on them for inspiration for new ideas? Or is it that 1960s fashion ideas are somehow superior, making today's designers easily seduced into borrowing from fashion's glory years? The 60s fashion um, is very practical, for want of a better word. You know, jeans, hipsters, it's very easy to wear it. Anybody can wear it. So I think that's probably why it has a basis today. It was that it had a basic style, which you can draw back to if you run out of ideas, which I think they frequently do. It's not important to me. I have a fond affection for it like an old friend who I never see anymore. But you always have a good memory. But, uh, you know, for me, I would just rather go forward, do something else. But it's part of me, it's going to rub off somehow. You take from the past. It's not important to me that I know exactly where it comes from. You know, it's what you do with it. And I think that's what's happening now. It's what they do with it. A good designer, they put his own interpretation on it. So actually it's something that changes. That's how things evolve. A young mind in 2004 will, will think differently about the past than I will. So their, their interpretation will be slightly different. That's a great thing. That's why it's always, fashion is always going forward. But they do all look the same. It is a conveyor belt. It's, there's not enough people being individual. In most high street retailers today, it will be hard not to find a garment which has directly borrowed from 1960s manufacturing innovations. And whether the general public realises the origins of something as commonplace as the hipster trouser, the miniskirt or slogan t-shirt may not be important. But it is true to say that the further we get from the 1960s, the less we recognise how much we rely upon it as a blueprint for basic design ideas. Yeah.